Hey, I'm Larissa from Beekeeping Made Simple, and this video is about how to prepare your beehive in case of a hurricane coming or any big storm that has a lot of rain and wind. I've been a beekeeper for 13 years, and 10 of those years I was keeping bees in Hawaii for a commercial apiary and for myself. So I'm going to explain what I do to keep my bees safe. And then at the very end, I'll add in what the commercial apiary did when they had thousands of hives that they needed to prepare with just less than 24 hours notice. And if you like this honeybee shirt or any of the other beekeeping inspired shirts that you've seen me wear on my YouTube videos, check out the link in the video description below for the store where I have all of these things for men, women, and kids. Thanks for your support. When getting your hive ready for a hurricane to come, I like to start with the bottom and work my way up. First things first, my hive is just on a pallet. It's only elevating the hive a few inches. So I like to put it on some cinder blocks to make it a little bit higher, especially if you are by water, ocean, rivers, streams, creeks, the bottom of a hill, on a mountain, you will probably want to keep your hive elevated so water isn't getting inside. So if you have someone to help you, great. If not, you can always take your boxes apart one by one to move them temporarily. And I like to use cinder blocks because they have the hole in the side, which makes it easy to take your ratchet strap and strap everything down. You might have your hives elevated high enough, but if you have some of those hive stands that are a little bit more flimsy and a little, they look like a little wooden table, you also might want to put them on something a little bit heavier so that they're less likely to get blown over. Um, so I lay down some cinder blocks, have the holes facing towards the side of the beehive, not the front entrance or the back of the beehive. And then next we put the hive back down onto the cinder box. But first, before you put your boxes on, you want to look at your bottom board. This hive is on a solid bottom. So just in case you have water that rain that gets inside your hive, water can pull up on the landing board and bees can drown in it. You'd be surprised at how little water you need for a bee to drown in. So for the solid bottoms, what you can do is just take a shim and put it in the back of the beehive. Um, in a pinch, the bottom to a Langstroth frame works really well. You just don't want to elevate it a couple of degrees because that is not enough for the water to flow down, it will still pull up. You want it to be at least like five or so degrees. If you have a screened bottom, then what you're gonna wanna do is take corrugated plastic. That's what the political signs are made out of. They sell them in just plain white at hardware stores. This is a mite test that came with my screened bottoms with the oil pan for the beetle traps, which I don't use because it's a terrible way to uh, detect mite levels but you can put that on top of your screened bottom. I don't use screened bottoms because I found a lot of mold is in my hive uh, here where it is so humid, but you can put that down on your screen just so that a whole lot of wind uh, and possibly rain isn't getting up into your beehive. You can use regular cardboard as well. I would cut it a little bit smaller than the size you need just so that water can flow out. Uh, on the sides if needed. And what I have on my beehive is the screen bottom with oil pan, like this. If you have this, then you don't have to do anything because you still have a screen bottom for water to come out if needed, but then you also have the pan to protect the bees from wind and rain. I'm gonna put the next, the first box on And it's always good to reduce the entrance a little bit. You can either move your bees so that the entrance is facing uh, the side of a building or some kind of wind block. But if that is not go going to be the case, then you can always put an entrance reducer on. You know, I think the larger one is just fine, but if you like, you can do the smaller one too. And 
I like to leave it up just a little bit so water still can get out <laughs> also if needed and this reduces the amount of rain that can blow into your hive now as we put the boxes back on you want to take off any empty boxes maybe you just added a honey super on top or maybe you have a super on top that just has one or two frames full of honey and the rest are empty take those frames off shake the bees off put the frames in your refrigerator or freezer put them in another beehive whatever you want to do take off that empty box temporarily and put it back on after the hurricane has passed you don't want a whole bunch of empty boxes on the beehive. You want your beehive to be as small and compact uh, as possible. Then we're gonna go and take our cinder blocks and put some on the lid. And of course you can use bricks or heavy rocks, but the cinder blocks work really nice because um, I only have one cinder block for this lid because that's all I have left and all that's really necessary. But if you're and have a much stronger hurricane coming their way then you should really put two cinder blocks on top and put that on top and then you can feed your ratchet strap through ratchet straps are ha helpful to have when moving bees or when transporting a nuke. If you're expecting some really severe wind, then you can also take another ratchet strap and drill some augers into your ground and use that as an additional way to keep your hives strapped down. The other thing that you can do is move your hives. You can move your hives close together so that they are in a cluster and there's not uh, gaps in between them for wind to blow through. And you can also move them to a windbreak. The ideal would be next to a building like a barn. And if your hives are near or under trees, make sure that you cut down any limbs that you think could potentially fall down onto your beehive. Two tips. One, make sure you write down the way your beehives were before you move them. You know, it's just a simple little diagram, what hive is where and what direction the entrance is facing. The bees will appreciate it. And two, when moving your bees, uh, they always say you wanna move them at least a mile away. And that is not true. You can move them less than a mile away. There's just uh, one thing you need to do is make sure that they know they've been moved. So just temporarily after you move them, put something in front of the entrance so that they have to get by it like a branch or something and then move it you know you know before like the storm comes and it gets blown away and of course moving them in the evening after sunset is the best the second best would be early in the morning around sunrise but to keep your bees safe you move them whenever you have to because it's better to just lose some bees or to have bees move to another hive than and your hive be safe during a hurricane than to keep them where they are, to have them getting blown over or having something large falling on top of it. So this is what I do to prepare my personal beehives for a hurricane. When I worked for a commercial apiary and they had thousands of hives, a staff of seven taking care of them and their hives are in yards of 100 apiece, 45 minutes to an hour and a half away and you only have a day or so notice, what they would do is just go to as many yards as they could and just screw the lids down to the hive. And that was it. Their hives were in clusters of four on pallets. And since we are here in Hawaii, where we are on a volcano, um, none of their hives were down in the flat co coastal areas, but higher up in elevation where there's a lot wetter and a lot more rainy. So they didn't have to worry too much with flooding. And, and that's about all they did. The worst hurricane I saw was about nine years ago and it actually wasn't too bad. It hit the east side of the island the worst. And that's because we're here on the west side and most hurricanes are coming from the east. So they hit the east side of the island and they really just sit there and just bring a ton of rain and wind 
to the poor people on that side and it breaks up before it comes over here to the west side the worst hurricanes i experienced as a beekeeper were in the last two years i kept bees in pennsylvania before coming to hawaii when hurricane irene and then hurricane sandy came and hurricane sandy was that big hurricane that hit the east coast and new york city lost a lot of power and their subways were flooded and they were rationing gas and there was a lot of people that lost power in that tri-state area for quite a while my beehives did fine um the worst that happened was i had a top bar hive and when hurricane irene came i took bungee cords and um, put them around the lid in two different spots and then put a bunch of bricks on top and so with the wind what happened was the wind just kept on shaking the lid because uh, i had this extra plastic cover over it and it kept shaking the lid and eventually the bricks came off and the lid didn't come off the hive it just fell onto the side of the hive where it was still strapped to the side of the hive luckily one of my neighbors saw it so it's that these were on the roof of the parking garage next to the building the apartment building i lived in and he when the storm had passed he went out there and put the lid back on it and informed me of what happened in hawaii i did have one hive get knocked over and the first box the first brood box had died the second box fell over and was on its side and the lid was on the ground the second box actually survived and that happened to be where the queen was and so i put the box back on the landing board when i went out there put the lid back on and that hive was just fine it was just that first brood box that the, that bird didn't make it but that wasn't from a hurricane that was because i think it was a wild boar that came through the area and knocked it over i i actually have no idea because my beehives aren't on my property they're on other people's land my beehives aren't on my property they're on other people's land so i just went out there one day and saw a beehive knocked over so worst case scenario if your beehive does not get knocked over there is still a chance or if your lid falls off there is still a chance that your bees will be okay thanks for watching bye at the end of this video people don't forget to subscribe do a 